Ego keeps us alive. Ego keeps us from walking into traffic. We right. need ego to stay alive. Yeah. But it's when you can get your spirit and your ego to dance, right? Yeah. That's what yeah. the, some of these ceremony yeah. shaman will talk about. That's when it's really, that's when it's really humming. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you get back to that? Do you feel like that? Bre like your breath work experience helped you to, I don't know how to explain it, to like mesh with this and 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 surrender a little easier. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, it it does because. Breath is the only thing you can hold on to in that moment, yeah. and I can go back to it always. And even even as a facilitator of breath work, the you know, the the fourth time ago that first night we did it two nights in a row. I was I mean I was going I was in it. And You're I drinking was, that. I was yeah sludge I mean, I was, two nights oh, in God, a row. Yeah. yeah, and but I was in it hard, and I just I wasn't comfortable, and I kept seeing. I kept having these visuals of, of what I do with the sandbags and with the veterans, with all these people and the go, go, go and all the stuff that I do. But then at the same time, I would say, you need to breathe. You need to chill out. You need to teach breath. You need to get on the social channels you're talking about doing all this shit. And you need to tell them to calm down and breathe. And then it would go back to this. But I need to fight. But I need to breathe. And I was like, it was this constant battle. And I was rocking back and forth. And I couldn't get comfortable. And... Um, and I was I was purging, but I was purging energy. Nothing was coming up, and I was doing this for hours. Oh, and so my fiance had her hand on my back. One of my buddies came over, um, and he was like, he put his head on my head, and he was just holding me. He was like, "Breathe, brother, breathe, breathe." And I was just and I would breathe through it, and I would breathe through it, and I would start to. And this is the funny thing too, because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not above needing to ask for help, and also recognizing that I can't breathe too. So there were moments in it where I was, I was, I felt like I was hyperventilating, and mm. I was like, you know. And then I would, t then I would have a visual of I in that specific night, I had the visual of the latest Adaptive Training Foundation class that I'd led through breathwork for nine weeks, and I saw all of them around me, and them seeing me in that space, being human, not being the guy leading breathwork and like, hey guys, everything's cool. They saw me as just getting my ass handed to me. And I was like, mm, this is what you needed. Mm. And so, but I, and I would remind myself, breathe. And I would bring it, I would bring myself back to it. Because you're right, like for you and anyone that, if you don't know about it, you start to have that feeling, you start to hyperventilate, and then you start to freak out. But if you can know, number one, it's going to stop. And number two, whatever is happening is happening for you, not to you. Yeah. And then you just calm yourself down. And you're down. safe. Yeah. Everything around you is Okay. Is whatever you're seeing, whatever you're feeling, it's for you and you're safe. Uh, you know who Dorian Yates is? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, yeah. his stories are crazy, right? The first time he ever uh that he ever sat with ayahuasca was just with this guide. Yeah. The guy like cooked it up for him, gave it to him around a campfire. He said it was a very uh very um it was it's not a good experience. Yeah. And then he's talking about kind of his journey there, and then he's then he finds and he st started to find that when he would uh, go to a ceremony with a group of others, that the the energy was just much different. Mm -hmm. um, why why do you think that is? What's your opinion on why it's important when you sit with the ayahuasca to have other human beings around you? That energy that. Sometimes it's traumatic, man. There's people if you're if you're in a room where there's ladies, maybe they've gone through some side, some sort of really traumatic situation, and they're mm -hmm. just they're screaming and hollering. Yeah, there's it's a that 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 being comfortable being uncomfortable thing yeah. really rings true there. But why do you think it's important to 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 sit with it in a group instead of just hey, I'm gonna shut the lights off? Yeah. Throw some down the hatch, <laughs> put on a YouTube video, and see what happens. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> what do you think would happen, bro? I don't know. I, I mean, you'd be fine, but you, you might end up breaking on windows yeah, out of right? your own house. <laughs> or something. I think I feel from personal experience is I we have a group that will do it annually, and I, I got to sit with my fiance for the first time uh, this two times ago, and it's different because it's the African proverb, dude. You, we, if you want to go far, go together. Mm. Like you have to have community around you. Did you have a hard time really letting go mm. when you when you experienced this with her? Oh no, Be, no, no. Even though you're like you're her protector, you didn't. That didn't. No. That didn't interfere. I let it go. And the next day, she's like, "I'm so proud of you." She's like, "I'm so impressed." Did by she you. have? Did she have experience she with did. it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We so both it's not did. like it was no. your 25th time and her first time. No. She had she had done it okay. three times before. Okay. Um, it was our first time together, and it was beautiful because she's she's dealt her life with 
with her mother. She had a single mother who worked three jobs who was never there because she couldn't be. She did the best she could, but Kirsten was always always felt like she she was alone. She didn't belong, and she was a burden. So the first night, she saw a lot of that, and she, we're, we're right beside each other, and I hear her breaking down, and she's always felt like she's alone. And what what better time for me to put my hand on her and arms around her, go hold her and say, and I, I knew, I, I didn't know, but I knew, and I just whispered in her ear, you're never alone. Wow. You will never be alone as long as I'm alive. You will never be alone. I've got you. What's the depth of that connection like when it's when it's Dude, in an experience like that? It's that that changes the game. I mean, it, it's there's a bond that 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 you see each other in, a, in the most raw, vulnerable space. And even with the other the other people in the room. This isn't friends, jamming out to your no, favorite dude. song at a Morgan Wallen concert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is just a whole different yeah. level. Yeah. And Especially when, when it's someone who you hmm? uh who you're going to share your life with, yeah. who you love yeah. like that. Exactly. And wow. even like our friends, man, like, you know, somebody's but my, my boy beside me, he was, he was good, but you know, he'll just, he just puts his hand out and he was going through some stuff and I had my hand laying down and he oh. put his hand on top of mine and I just let him sit there for just a minute. Then I, I rolled over and just hold, we just held hands for a wow. little bit. And this is a former NFL quarterback, a really, really good one. Wow. And we're just, you know, growing out, holding hands and like holding each other and like, Hey bro, you're good. Wow. I love you. And so when you can, when you're going through an experience like that in plant medicine, um, when it is uncomfortable, knowing that you have the support of other people around you, that allows you to go and just let it be. You know, one of the guys in in the second night that, of that ceremony with my fiance was having a pretty rough time, and he had gone outside of the maloka, the place where you, you're doing the medicine, and his uh, his wife was actually helping, so they had brought him back in, and our our medicine person said, "Hey guys, our, our boy here is not doing too good." And we all we all knew each other in that room, so she's like, "Hey, if you have the ability to in the space, would you please come around? Let's put some hands on him." And dude, I, I that took me. I was still in the medicine, but I was able to go over there and I just held him. I held his leg and I just rubbed his leg, put my hand over his chest and his heart. And I don't know for how long, but I just put energy as much like my whole thing was: if I've got it to give, I'm giving it to you. So and you know and be, so being able to in a group of people when I don't feel well or he doesn't feel well, offer support, which as men we don't do, no. as community we don't do, and also to have the, the the women see men, grown, big, alpha males, like giving each other the support that we should be giving each other all the time, that's what changes the game. That's what starts to alter the way we exist in the, in, in life. 